Hey guys, Pete here with another 11 Yanks video. I'm very excited to share this interview that I got to do with former USMNT midfielder, Jermaine Jones. I was able to sit down with him at the United Soccer Coaches Convention in Kansas. He was very gracious with his time, gave me about 20 minutes to talk to him about a whole host of things, including what it was like choosing to play for the United States, some of his favorite memories playing for the US, what he thinks happened with the Kuva disaster in 2018, his different experience working under coaches like Jurgen Klinsmann and Bruce Arena. He talked about passion and fan culture and how that affects a soccer culture overall in America. He also talked about why he's often seen as outspoken or controversial and the role that criticism plays in a soccer culture. Culture, and he even addressed his comments about Bruce Arena being one of the worst coaches he's ever played for, as well as his infamous video about Jordan Morris. I thought he was very candid and honest and vulnerable, and I really enjoyed speaking with him. So guys, I really hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. Jermaine, thank you so much for uh, coming to talk to us. I was at your uh, Q&A this morning, yeah. and I got some really interesting perspectives on the game. Could you talk a little bit about how you came to play for the U.S., you know, what were the factors that helped you to make that decision? Um, and just, you know, we have a lot of dual nationals in the national team okay. now and, and the feelings of making that decision, what it's like. Um, I remember in 2010, I think uh, before 2010, end of 2009, me and uh, Bob Bradley started getting in touch because um, I remember Bob, uh, Michael Bradley was playing in Gladbach and I was playing in Schalke and we were always in touch. Mm. And um, so I reached out with my agents to the Federation and we asked if it's possible to make a switch between uh, from Germany to go play for the, to the United States. But um, so they denied it because there was a rule and I played in the U20 World Cup for Germany yeah. in Argentina. So they said they will be not able to do it because you had a, a qualification World Cup like something was not um, in the paper so you were not allowed. But then in 2010, I think there was a voting about all the smaller countries and everything. They voted against the bigger ones that if you have youth qualification games or youth tournaments, yeah. you will be still available if you just had friendlies for the first team. Gotcha. So then they reached out in 2010 and Bob Bradley came straight over to have a meeting with me. So he came, we had dinner. And after that dinner, I decided and I said, like, okay, if, if what he, you know, the conversation we had and everything, it felt good. And I was like, you know, I, I always were always connected because um, what I said in the in, in my previous um, interviews that my um, my parents just split up really young in uh, when I was really young, so I grew up without a dad and um, and I knew my dad is in America, so I always wanted to play for the national team so that he maybe can see me on TV and be like, oh, that's my son, you. Wow. you know. And um, so I had always the goal, and then 2010 it, it happened. Did you reunited with your dad at any point? Yeah, after 20 years. After yeah. 20 years, wow. That, was he proud of you? Yeah, you he, he, you know, typical American guy, grew up um, in, in Mississippi, you oh, know, wow. Greenwood. Okay. And um, so he was not really, um, uh, how you can say, used to it. He don't know the rules in, the, in, in general game of soccer. Yeah. But um, when I brought him the first time, he was like, he was kind of surprised. He was like, oh my God, wow. Yeah. But it, it was in general, it was... Uh, it was a different vibe because happiness of after 20 years, you know, you don't see each other and all that right. stuff. So yeah. we met the first time in Miami. That's awesome. Hey guys, you need to check out Bounty Sports, which is a totally different way of playing fantasy sports. Instead of picking players like other websites, you pick teams, you compete against other players, and you win cash prizes. Signing up is easy. There's no deposit or credit card needed. And what I like about this is that they've got multiple contests running simultaneously across multiple sports. This week I'm playing the Premier Pick'em $3 entry fee, $81 prize. These are my picks. Uh, West Ham beats Newcastle at home. Arsenal beats Brentford. Aston Villa, I think, gets a tie with Watford. Crystal Palace will lose to Pulisic-inspired Chelsea. Uh, Liverpool definitely beats Norwich. Uh, Southampton will get a draw with Everton. Uh, Brighton will actually beat Burnley. Manchester City, I think, gets a draw with Tottenham. Leeds gets a draw at home with Manchester United. And Wolves will beat Leicester. Here we go. So, guys, if you want to play against me, go use my code 11YANKS. That's 11, no spaces, all caps, Y-A-N-K-S, and get $5 from Bounty Sports for you to use. Come play against me. It's a ton of fun. Don't forget, you can either click the link in the description or use the code 11YANKS when you sign up for Bounty Sports. Um, 
What was your favorite memory playing for the U.S.? My favorite memory, um, I would say, of course, the goal against Portugal. But yeah. then, um, I would say the first game too when we played against Poland, and I came, and I had the chance to wear the jersey the first time. It was the number, I think, number 15. I wore it at this, at this Is that time. A friendly. It was a friendly, I think, in in New York. Okay. And um, and you know, because I was so excited, I was like looking forward to, to you know play for the national team and. In, in, in then standing there wearing the jersey, you know, listening to the national anthem and all that stuff, it was it was special. And then, of course, the goal in in Brazil. Yeah. You know, it's it's always a point where I always say, it starts already in a young age when you're young. You yeah. dream about every every time about maybe going to a World Cup or like an Euro Cup when you play in Europe and stuff, Champions League and all that stuff. And then making it and scoring a goal against a top team and everything coming yeah. out of this, you know, um, group of death. It was special. Yeah, I remember I was in Minneapolis visiting my sister at the time and I was in a bar. Very few people were watching the yeah. game. And you scored that goal and I lost my shit. I was jumping up and down, screaming, let's go. And I was like, what is going on? What is going on? World <laughs> Cup, guys, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> and people did. People were like, oh, this is America? I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that was really cool. It's, it was, yeah, it was. Like for me, you know what was the crazy on that goal was? In the moment, of course, you, you celebrate and you're happy, you know? But yeah. then after that, when, you, when I got back to the hotel, yeah. And then started looking all social media and you can see like all the celebration in different yeah. restaurants and bars. Yeah. Then I was like, okay, yeah. that's, you, that's you a moment, that. you know, yeah. that's a moment we'll, we'll stay in history. For sure. After, you know, 2014 and then we had the Copa America in 2016, another high point going to the semifinals. Yeah. What happened after that? Because it, up, leading up to 2018 with the World Cup, and I know you weren't involved all the way to the very end, but you were there at the beginning. What happened with us? Why did we fail so spectacularly? Do you have any thoughts on that? You know, there's there's a lot of stuff, you know, we, you, we, you can discuss. I think there was wrong or made decisions, you know. If you if you want to talk about wrong players maybe in the system, wrong players in, you know, at, at, at the time, you know. And um, I can just speak for myself, you know. I felt I was still ready to go, you know, and, and I always say that that if I will be in that team, that I'm, I'm pretty sure that we will go to the World Cup. Mm. You know, I, I was always a leader of the team. I was a, I was a some a person who, who, who hated losing. Yeah. And I will always make try to make my teammates better. In having me on the bench or in the first eleven, I think it would be no difference. But at that time, I think as me as a person, Jermaine Jones, if I look at as a as a coach view. If I had the chance to bring Jermaine Jones for qualifying for the World Cup or for the World Cup, I would definitely bring him. Yeah. But when you ask me what was the mistakes, I think there's other people you have to ask yeah. and, um, and go deeper in because that's not my position to criticize on yeah. people, you know. I just can talk for myself. Yeah. And for myself, I was still ready to go in, but I got not picked. Yeah. So, but what? You worked under both uh, Bruce Arena and Jermaine, jo uh, sorry, and Jurgen Klinsmann as coaches. Uh, what were the difference in styles or approaches to the game? What, you know, I'm sure you took something away from both of them. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I think we start with Jurgen. Um, Jurgen is a person. He's um, he has everything planned. You know, yeah. there's 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 nothing happened just out of you know a mistake or just comes up you know yeah. it's really like he knows every step till yeah. the end so that's something like you really can look in and you know in of course his playing experience where he played you know the, the the connections he has and all that stuff is just like you can see like he's a real humble guy you know and then on the field he he knows what he's doing you know yeah. in um with Jürgen yeah, I think you can see the impact still with the U.S. men's national team everything he asked in 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 one it changed is actually now in place, right. you know, and, um, and that's why we're having this the situation that our country is uh, developing that extremely fast in, in soccer, yeah. you know, in Bruce, I think if you look at Bruce's um, um, achievements, especially in the, in the MLS, it's, it's, it's amazing, so you have to give him credit for that, you know, he's, I would say, like one of the older coaches and with the most experience in the league, yeah. And he's still doing it. He did it now with New England Revolution, won the Supporter Shield. Yeah. You know, I think Bruce's qualities, um, uh, I think, uh, the, 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 to find the, the balance between um, players, but he's more, 
I would say, um, a guy who's like going into the personal side of players, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and there he, he's doing a really good job. More of a man manager. Yeah. Uh, you once said that he was one of the worst coaches you'd ever worked for. Do you still feel that way? You know, th th that's the point. Like if you ask me as, as Jermaine Jones as a player, yeah. you know, um, I say that, yes. And, um, and uh, if you ask me why I said that, I would say from, from, from the outcome, what I said before, Jermaine Jones wanted to go to the World Cup. Jermaine Jones wanted to play qualification games. Yeah. In that moment, I was sitting and have to watch it. Yeah. And I knew that I'm better than the players that were still playing. Mm -hmm. In the training session I've been through and I saw, I don't see how there's developing, you know? Yeah. But um, was it good to say that way? I don't know, maybe not, you know? You yeah. get older and you learn from stuff, you know? But I think it's just, um, you know, people sometimes, Especially with my, with my words when I say stuff, people put it like really high because yeah. they know it can go and spread a lot, you yeah. know? So, but he knows it, you know? I talked with him, I apologized to him, you know? I think he's a good coach, yeah. you know? He, he, he changed soccer here, in, especially with LA Galaxy. He yeah. did a good job over years. So we have to give him credit for that. Certainly, certainly. And, you know, he took 2002, took us to the quarterfinals. Yeah, finals exactly. He did good stuff with the national team too, for sure. One thing I've always admired about you is that you're not afraid to say what you think. And you have passion and you have personality. And sometimes, I, I coached in Europe and, and in Asia, and what I noticed in most places in the world is that's just part of the game. There's passion and passion yeah. is messy. It's not perfect, right? And sometimes I feel like here, they, certain elements in the soccer uh, sort of landscape in America want passion, but within a certain box. They want passion only this way. And that's not how passion works, right? Passion is, is free. And uh, could you speak a little bit about you know, personality and passion as it relates to the game and, and how that relates to the growth of a game and, and, and people caring more about soccer? Yeah. You know? I think like, you can see there's the passion if you talk about passion for the game, then you just have to look at countries like in South America mm. or look at in, in Europe, you know. There's, there's a healthy kind of passion for the game, you know, and I think that's, that's that's important, you know. This is why we play in it, especially all the players who want to play it. If you go into a stadium and the stadium's empty because nobody comes to the game, nobody can scream, nobody. You see it now with COVID. Like, yeah. it's, it's, you don't want to play, yeah. you know, because you need people there, you need people with passion, you know. I love to play always against teams, say, like playing in, in, in CONCACAF or playing against Mexico in Mexico, yeah. you know, something like that, because you know just you go out there and they're all against you but it's nice they have the passion and i love that you know yeah. it's the same when i played in turkey they have extremely passion yeah. you win they celebrate you you lose you're staying at home for like three days you yeah. know yeah. but i think that's something i think as a as a player you really appreciate yeah you know that the fans have that passion i believe they should have it you know and be allowed for it and then as a player too you know um i i believe that sometimes you have to stay stuff you know and you know, but there, of course, there has to be always mid respect, you know, yeah. in, um, you know, criticizing people or, or saying sometimes, sometimes uh, stuff is, it should be okay, you know, yeah. you just have to be, you know, be smart enough, don't talk in front, you know, about your teammates, whatever you want to relate to yourself, yeah. do it, this is what I say every time with myself, yeah. I was a player, I love to, to, to take the pressure on me, I love to say something, but a lot of times people don't recognize, they don't know me. Yeah. They know the person I give you. Right. So, but you don't know the Jermaine Jones who's like the family dad and is quiet yeah. and is doing other stuff. I just give you the guy you want to see because yeah. you put me in that one, like in that place. So I give you the Jermaine Jones you want to see. So I tell, you know, I'm going out and say, that person's up or that is going on or yeah. this is happening. But inside, the person knows that I love him and I would go for him right. to everything, you know? Yeah. But I say it outside because I want to maybe get him out, that he gets fired, that he gets angry against me, yeah. then he wants to show, prove it. Yeah. And the opposite is too, that if I say stuff, with, especially with the national team, I knew, or with Schalke, when I say something, I take away the whole context and the whole talk for the whole week, and everybody's on me because everybody's like, he's crazy, why is he saying that, and this is not nice. Yeah. But that means for the other guys, they can just do their thing and they yeah. just be themselves. Yeah. And I love it because I go out there and I like to, to be under that pressure. Because yeah. if you open your mouth, you have to back it up on the weekend. Right. And that's, I did it most of the time of my career. So when I say something, I backed it up. 
when you were at LA Galaxy, um, you made a video about how important it was for players to be challenging themselves yeah. in Europe, right? And uh, you spoke a little bit about Jordan Morris. Uh, yeah. But what you said was the same thing that Jurgen Klinsmann and Bob Bradley before you had also said. Um, do you still think that there is some resistance with, you know, within American soccer to maybe not push ourselves and go to the highest level? Or do you think that is starting to change now from people like you speaking out and saying your opinion? You know, that, that has, for me, was like the funny part on that whole interview when I did it. It had nothing to do with U.S. soccer or nothing to do with the league, you yeah. know, or MLS. It was, I went individual against one player, you yeah. know, and that was Jordan Morris, right. you know, and, and I said because I, you, you, you know the video. And I said that because for my side, I want to have players to be hungry and they want to be battle with the best, yeah. you know. And that's what I want to see on players. And that's why you see it now. Look at the Weston, look at the Pulisic, Reyna, and all the guys. Yeah. You can go to the whole men's national team. And they all play in the highest level, yeah. you know? But this is why our league gets better, yeah. you know? This is why our academy system in MLS gets better. Because now kids, they want to go there. They want to play Chelsea, they want to play thing. Yeah. Yes, is that good for all, our, all of us? 100%, it helps MLS, it helps USL, it helps uh, the national team, if we get our players as soon as possible in the highest level, yeah. they will be good. Because yeah. that means they're leaving maybe with 17, 18 and going playing over there. Yeah. But that means we have young talent players out of academy pushing back into the first team in MLS. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a coming and going, you know. And that has nothing for my side, was nothing against MLS or US soccer. It was just in general, I wanted the players to be more hungry and not just like, oh, I'm comfortable here and I take yeah. the comfortable road instead of being like, oh, I battle myself every day in training to maybe get that one position in, in, the, in the top team. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything that you think there's anything we do in the US that the world can benefit from in soccer? Maybe it's uh, you know technology or sports science. Is there anything at all, or even the way we do things? We don't have promotion relegation. I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. If there's because I know we can learn a lot, obviously, from most of the world, and we do need to. Is there anything that we can bring to the table in terms of the soccer conversation? I think it's like um, if you go in, I would talk about the academy system. You know, like mm -hmm. if you see now the develop phase and how it gets quicker and better. Like, look at FC Dallas, like. They're sending one player after each other over to Europe, so yeah. that that means we're doing something right in the in the in the academy system. Yeah. And and now different company or different companies, I say different clubs, looking in what Dallas is doing, how they're doing it, setting it up. You can see we are sort of like city. They started now building a real facility for the academy, and in all that, it's just like I think other countries they're looking in because I'm talking with teams in Europe and teams are played and they're all interested in the youth system here because mm. they're seeing just like that we're producing more and more kids coming and this is just the beginning. Mm. We're just 25 years in in professional MLS or it's 26 like with the things, with everything. Yeah. And if you see the develop, it's unbelievable what is coming and I think that, that all the other countries recognize that. Awesome. Last question for you. Do you think the US can win a World Cup in the next 10 to 20 years? Or is that too high? You know, Every tournament starts by, by, by zero zero in you, you, you cannot. There's favorites, yes, and there's no favorites. But uh, I would say if they continue to rebuild and continue to, you know, look at just the, 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 the group right now. They're young. They will stay for the next couple of years together. And they will just add pieces to it to make them better. So yeah. why not? You know, I believe in them and I, I wish this country that we can do it at one point, you know. If it's in the next 10 years, I don't know, you know, but I believe that if we building in creating something good, it can happen because I remember nobody had back in the days uh, Creek on, on, their, on their roster that they can win the Europe's yeah. and they won the Europe's and yeah. everybody was like, how is that possible? So there's always, you just have to have luck with the group, you have to have luck who you get in the, in the, in the, in the last 16 and yeah. all that stuff and, and it's always possible, you know, yeah. and, 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 and for me is the point this. If you doubt against it, come on. And you're an yeah. American, there's something wrong. So <laughs> exactly. That's, that's very American to believe in something that's almost impossible. So to say it's anything is possible, we can do it. Exactly. That's what this country is built on. Yeah, and this should, that's the, the, the way to go, I think. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time, Jermaine. I really appreciate it. Of course. It. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Awesome. Go. <laughs> Thank you. So it'll be on YouTube. It's, the channel's called 11 Yanks. We have about 12,000 subscribers.